Good evening. evening. Welcome to our Good Friday service. Uh, Good to see all of you here this evening. Uh, A service of tenebrae. If you've never been in one of these services, uh, that that word means darkness or shadows. And you can kind of tell it's not not lit terribly bright in here and it will get a little darker as we go. Um, A couple of notes I just want to make sure everybody's aware of before we start. Um, One is that once we get going, all of the overhead lighting will be down. Um, If you do need to leave, of course, the exits are still, you know, the hallways and stuff. You You can still get to those. Nobody's blocking anything like that, but the lights will be pretty low in here. Um... The other is that when the, yeah, they'll look like that. We can actually turn the side lights on for right now. We'll turn them off in a minute when we get through the opening prayer. But I'll give you an idea, though, where we are. Um, uh, The one note I just want to make sure everybody knows is that when the Christ candle is put out close to the end of the service, there will be a very loud noise. It'll be a cymbal crash, and you'll hear some sound. Uh, Don't let that scare you, because it's going to be a lot louder than everything else that's happened up until then. Um, you also will hear some other sounds at the end, but you won't be able to see anybody because I will be out of view. So just be aware of that too. Uh, we would ask that when you leave at the end of the service, that uh, you do as you usually do, that the folks in the rear closer to the door would go first, and then the others. We would ask that you'd leave in silence. It's not something I would typically ask you, but from this particular service, we'd ask that you would leave silently and, and prayerfully. Uh, last thing is please turn off your cell phones, uh, or at least mute them. Uh, most of you are pretty good about that, but um, it, it would be a sort of a jolt to the middle of this service if one went off, including mine. I've stuck it in the office just in case. Um, or no, I don't. Heather has it now. But it's muted. <laughs> I, that's the last place I had it. I forgot you carried it out here. Um, with that, I think that's all of the housekeeping so good to see all of you. If you would, if you'd stand for the opening acclamation and prayer, and uh, we will begin. Heard it said once to stand if you're able, and if you're not, then stand in your spirit. And that's a good way to do it too. So if that's difficult, please don't feel bad. Uh, Let's begin. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light. God is light, and neither there is no darkness at all. For God sent the Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Come, let us worship in spirit and truth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, Look with mercy upon your family gathered here, from whom our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, given into sinful hands, and suffered death upon the cross. Strengthen our faith, and forgive our betrayals as we enter the way of his passion. Through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and unto the ages of ages. Amen. You may be seated. It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. The religious leaders who had collaborated with the Roman occupation were conspiring against Jesus. They had gathered in the palace of Caiaphas, the high priest. This man had received the high priesthood at the hand of Valerius Gratus, the former Roman governor, and now retained the office under Pontius Pilate. They all were planning to arrest and destroy Jesus quietly so as to avoid a popular revolt among the Jews. At this time, Jesus was lodging at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. While he was there, a woman approached and anointed him with an alabaster jar of pure nard. When his disciples saw the act, they were outraged. Why this waste, they demanded. 
such a costly ointment might have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. Jesus responded, Why do you trouble the woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. You always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Indeed, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will be told in her memory. The one of the twelve, named Judas, son of Simon, the Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, What will you give me if I deliver Jesus to you for the governor? When they heard the offer, they were glad and promised Judas thirty pieces of silver. From that hour, he sought an opportunity to betray Jesus. At the beginning of the feast, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, the disciples of Jesus approached him and asked, where do, you wish to prepare, where do you wish us to prepare the Paschal meal? Jesus took two of his disciples and instructed them, Go into the city, and you will see there a man carrying a water jar. He will show you a suitable place. The two did as Jesus commanded. They entered the city where they found the man with the water jar, who brought them to a large upper room. When evening had come, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, I tell you truly that one of you is going to betray me. The disciples were stunned with grief and began to protest one after the other. Surely not I. Jesus replied, The betrayer is one of you who dips his hand into the bowl with me. The Son of Man is fulfilling scripture, but woe to that man through whom the Son of Man is portrayed. Then Judas slipped out into the night. As they were eating, Jesus took bread. After blessing it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Then taking the cup, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, and he said, This is my blood of the covenant, which is being shed for the many. I tell you the truth, that I shall not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it fresh in the kingdom of God. Then, having sung him, they left the city for the Mount of Olives. As they walked, Jesus said to his disciples, You will all desert me this very night. So it is written in the prophet Zechariah, Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Then Peter protested, Though all desert you, I will remain by you. Jesus replied, I tell you truly, that in this very night, before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me three times. Still Peter maintained, even though I must die with you, I will never deny you. And so declared all the disciples.
Jesus halted at an olive grove called Gethsemane. Then going apart with Peter, James, and John, he left them on the watch to continue a little farther alone. There he fell on his face in anguished prayer. Soon he returned to the three on watch and found them sleeping. Rousing them, he asked Peter, could you not watch with me for just one hour? Watch and pray that you are not put to the test, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, Jesus went apart in troubled prayer. Again, he returned to find the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. A third time, Jesus withdrew to pray, and a third time he found the disciples sleeping. Then Jesus said, sleep and take your rest later on. Now is the time for the Son of Man to be delivered into the hands of sinners. Here my betrayer comes. Jesus had not finished speaking before Judas, one of his own disciples, arrived with a group of Roman soldiers and other armed men from the temple. Now the betrayer had arranged with authorities for a sign and had said, The man whom I kiss is the one you want. In accord with his, with his arrangement, Judas went directly to Jesus and cried out, Greetings, Rabbi. Then he gave him the kiss. Jesus responded, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Immediately the soldiers laid their hands on Jesus and held him fast. Then one of the disciples with Jesus drew his sword and cut off an ear from the slave of the high priest. Jesus touched the ear and healed it and said to them, Sheath your sword. All who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Do you not know that I can call upon my Father and that he will respond at once with more than twelve legions of angels. Then turning to the mob, Jesus continued, Have you come for me as against a rebel bandit with swords and clubs? Why did you not seize me in the temple where I sat teaching by day? Were you so afraid of the Jewish people that you must come for me by stealth? Nevertheless, your actions are fulfilling the words of the prophets. Then all of his disciples forsook him and fled. Those who had seized Jesus brought him to Caiaphas, whom the Romans had made a high priest. Peter followed at a distance as far as the courtyard. There he sat with the attendants and warmed himself by the fire. The high priest had gathered the whole council, and they began to arrange the case against Jesus, which they would present to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. The charge was that Jesus claimed to be king of the Jews, and they brought many false witnesses, but to no avail. Finally, some came forward and testified, We heard this man say, I will tear down this temple made with hands, and in three days build another not made with hands. The testimony was powerful and compelling, but even these witnesses were unable to agree on their testimony. Finally, Caiaphas stood up and examined Jesus directly. Have you no answer to these charges? demanded the high priest. Jesus remained silent and answered nothing. Caiaphas pressed him further and said, I implore you in the name of the living God that you tell us whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus answered, It is as you say, and you shall see the Son of Man seated on the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And Caiaphas stood and tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need do we have of witnesses? He has condemned himself. Behold, you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all concurred that Jesus was indeed worthy of death. Those holding Jesus began to spit on him and mock him and cover his face and strike him as they taunted him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ. Who is the one who hit you? A 
servant girl entered. She confronted Peter and said, You also were with this Jesus the Nazarene. Peter quickly gave a denial. I do not know what you're talking about, he replied, and went outside into the gateway. Meanwhile, a rooster crowed. Another servant girl saw Peter come out and said to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Again, Peter denied knowing Jesus. After a little while, the bystanders said directly to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you speak with a Galilean accent. Then he began to invoke a curse upon himself and to swear, I do not know the man. Immediately the rooster crowed, and Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter went out and wept bitterly. When morning arrived, all of the chief priests, along with other Roman collaborators, bound Jesus and delivered him over to Pontius Pilate, the imperial Roman governor. When Judas saw what was happening, he knew that Jesus was doomed. He brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders and confessed, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. What is that to us, they responded. That is your affair. Judas threw down the 30 pieces of silver in the temple. Then he went out and hanged himself. Picking up the silver pieces, the chief priest said, It is unlawful for us to put this silver into the treasury, for it is blood money. So they used the bunny to buy the potter's field for the burial of strangers. Therefore, that field is known to this day as the field of blood. Jesus stood before the Roman governor as the accusers made their charge. We found this man perverting our nation, they said. He was forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor and proclaiming himself to be the anointed king. And Pilate asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, You have said so. The chief priests were accusing him of many things, therefore Pilate spoke, again spoke to Jesus. Have you no answer to give? he asked. Look at how many accusations they are making. But Jesus astonished them by remaining silent. At the, fest at the festival, the governor used to release a prisoner anyone the crowd wanted. Now there was a notorious rebel who had committed murder during the insurrection. He was called Barabbas. So when they gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called to Christ? Now the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. And so they answered, Give us Barabbas. And Pilate said to them, What shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? And the crowd shouted, Crucify him. And Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has this man done? But they shouted it more the, all the more. Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, he washed his hands before the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And the people responded, His blood be on us and our children. 
Pilate then released for them Barabbas, and Jesus he handed over to be scourged and crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away within the governor's palace. There they assembled the whole battalion. They clothed Jesus in royal purple. They set a crown of thorns upon his head and shoved a reed between his fingers for a scepter. They began to mock him by kneeling before him and proclaiming, Hail, King of the Jews. They also spat upon him and smote him on the head. Then, after mocking him, they took away the purple, returned his own clothes to him, and brought him out to crucify him. On the road they met an African of Cyrene named Simon, coming in from the countryside. Him they compelled to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. There they crucified him. They offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he refused it. His garments they divided amongst themselves, casting lots for them. Over his head they inscribed the charges against him. This is the king of the Jews. Two criminals were also crucified along with him, one to his right and one to his left. Those who passed by were shaking their heads and saying, so you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Save yourself, come down from the cross. Likewise, the priestly collaborators mocked him as they said to one another, he saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Now from midday, there was a darkness over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At that hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders said, look, he is calling for Elijah. One of them put a sponge full of vinegar on a stick and laid it to his lips. Others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus, having uttered a loud cry, breathed his last breath and died. He was bruised for our iniquities. 
Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. For you, for me, and for the sins of all the people of all the ages, Christ has died. The service 